a bit of a forecast about what we're going to cover. Uh, for those of you who are perhaps not familiar with sketch noting, I'll cover what it is. Uh, I'll cover what the benefits of sketch noting are. We'll talk a bit about the equipment that might be useful for sketch noting, and I'll give you an overview of some of the components uh, of sketch noting. Uh, and I'll also give you some tips for real time sketch noting, that is taking sketch notes uh, during a live presentation. So sketch noting is known under lots of different names. You might hear it referred to as visual facilitation or graphic facilitation or visual note taking. Essentially, all these terms kind of mean the same thing. And I think one of the things uh, when I talk about sketch noting or I share my sketch notes online or on Twitter, people are obviously um, often very kind and say, oh, that's fantastic. Oh, I wish I could draw like that or oh, I'm not a good artist. I can't do sketch noting. Uh, one of the things I want to make very clear is that sketch noting is about conveying ideas, not art. OK, we're not producing a piece of fine art. We're not trying to be the new Banksy. We're just trying to get ideas across in a clear and concise way. So what I want you to do um, to, to write in the chat function is just say, what, what are these images, these three images that I've drawn here? What are they? Just write uh, in the chat. Yep. House computer timer, yep, house laptop clock, fantastic. OK, these are not amazing works of art, but each of you who have um, produced a, an input into the chat here have all come up with pretty much the same thing, that it's a house, a computer, laptop, time, clock. OK, uh, so very simply drawn items can convey uh, ideas um, that are consistent from, from all the input that we've got here. And I want you now to put into the chat what shapes make up these images. So <laughs> I like that one, home working, digital technologies. OK, so so tell me the shapes, though. what shapes are they? We've got triangles. What other shapes can you see? Yep. Squares, circles, basic shapes. Yep. Can you? Fantastic. Can you all draw triangles, squares, circles, semicircles? Absolutely. OK, can you all draw straight lines? Doesn't have to be very straight, <laughs> even roughly straight lines can help. If you can do all of these things, you can sketch note. OK, and that's one thing I want to get across. You don't have to be an artist to be able to sketch note. So I want to now talk about what are the, the benefits uh, of sketch noting. So it's been proven through research to improve recall. So when students have been uh, when students take notes verbatim, writing down everything that their lecturer says, uh, they're not having to synthesize or process that information. They're copying it down as fast as they can, word for word, uh, and not necessarily having to process that information. Sketch noting promotes active learning. The, the person who's listening to the information and then providing the sketch note needs to be able to uh, interpret the information, pick out the key points and then uh, draw those key elements. It also involves uh, dual coding, combining uh, two different parts of the brain that are involved with a visual and verbal input and combining these together. And essentially what this does is creates a, a visual map uh, of the learning in your head and you can transport that onto uh, a physical visual representation on your paper as a sketch note. So the process that we use for that is that we listen to the information, we process the information, trying to elicit the important parts, and then we draw um, the elements of that to represent the information that's being conveyed verbally. So you don't necessarily need fancy equipment for sketch noting. You can do sketch noting just with a pencil eh, and a bit of paper. Uh, but I would say um, having lots of different coloured pens uh, is quite exciting. I quite like that. I use um, Tombow. I'll just show them just now. Urgh. Sorry, two seconds. They are dual tipped. Hopefully you can see in the screen here. So this is a, a brush tip on one side uh, and a fine tip on the other. Uh, so the Tombow ones, so T-O-M-B-O-W, they're a bit more expensive, but you can get dual tip pens and WH Smith. I think there's about maybe 14 of them for uh, probably, I think about 15 pounds or something like that. Um, you can just use normal paper uh, between 80 and 100 uh, GSM is absolutely perfect. Um, I like to use a, a black fiber tip pen to write my notes, uh, depending on uh, how much you're writing or what you want to write. Um, then you might um, 
use a finer uh, pen to do that. So I've got a question in the chat there. Can you refill not these ones, the, the Newland ones, which are more expensive and now subject to Brexit import tax, uh, unfortunately. Uh, the Newland ones, these are refillable. You can get refills uh, for these, but that's, uh, I'll write it in the, the chat, the companies Newland, they, they're fantastic, but they are more expensive. Uh, and again, and again, and he, yeah, uh, subject to import tax now, thanks to, to Brexit. Um, there are people who are fantastic at producing sketch notes uh, on tablets. Uh, it's not a skill that I possess. It's one that I'm going to try and get better at. But for me, paper and pen uh, is where I'm at just now. But there are other people in HE who are absolutely fantastic uh, at producing sketch notes uh, digitally. So I had said before we um, on Twitter before we started, if you had pen and a bit of paper to hand, I was going to get you involved in doing some sketch noting as we get along. Uh, and later on, I'll, I'll post a, a Padlet link and you can upload your amazing uh, sketch notes onto the Padlet. OK, so the idea is that I give you some information as we go along. So what I want you to do is this uh, illustration on the right hand side here tells you how to create a title. So whenever you're creating a title with a banner round about it, you write your text first. So I want you to write the text my first sketch note and just write that. Uh, you can write it in the middle of the paper if you like. And then draw a rectangle around that text. And then if you look at step three here, we're drawing uh, two lines uh, and then connecting that um, to the side. If you look at step three. And then step four, we're joining the, the bottom of your extended part here up to the banner. And we'll talk about shadowing later, OK? But that's a way, that's one of the components uh, to identify different sections of your sketch note is to have these title banners. Another way that we can identify different sections, if you can see here uh, on the top right, is just to draw um, a rectangle. You always, you always do your writing first and then draw your rectangle around it and put a pin in it instead. So you draw a line uh, from uh, the, the text and a little dot at the, at the top, a little circle, and that represents like a pin. So you've got different ways uh, to do the headings. <laughs> exactly, David, if we were in Zoom. <laughs> so I'm a bit phobic of teams. At, uh, <laughs> I'm not great on teams. Uh, so this is a sketch note that I've produced. It was one of a session I was at about I'm doing it an Ed D and it was about um, developing a, a poster. It was one of the one of the assignments uh, that we had to do. OK, and you can see that there's ideas being conveyed uh, through uh, different use of we've got text bubbles, we've got images and you'll probably see there's some repetition in the images that I use, the icons uh, that I use. So um, Icon Finder is your friend, OK? It's a website. If you um, type in iconfinder.com into your into your phone, um, then uh, it comes up with uh, the website Icon Finder and you can type into that. So I'm actually wanting to use Icon Finder in real time. OK, so I'm going to do it as well. So just type Icon Finder into your phone. Iconfinder.com. OK, and then I want you to type in uh, a mug. Is that working for people? So the, the images that we're using for Icon Finder, we're just using them for ideas. We're not copying and pasting them. I find it really helpful to give me um, uh, ideas for for the images. So if you type in iconfinder.com and type into that um, a mug, tea bag, and kettle, and I want you to draw those. Okay, and I think if you can see <laughs> uh, my representation of different icons here, you'll find that when you are using icons, depending on the area that you work in, there'll be icons that you use repeatedly. I'm quite often talking about the use of social media and higher education, so I draw laptops frequently, I draw uh, mobile phones frequently, sometimes we're talking about global education. I draw worlds quite a lot. Students, I represent using a mortar board. I am absolutely rubbish at drawing brains. So if you draw something you think nobody really knows what that is, I label it so you can see I've written brain on top of it. OK, so if there's any doubt, 
looked at a drawing, you think that's not really that great, uh, then you could just write uh, what it's meant to be uh, above that. OK, so I hope you've had, uh, you can continue the opportunity to, to draw an icon of a mug, a tea bag uh, and a kettle. OK. So another thing that you may have noticed in my sketch notes is the use of shadows. We need to be consistent when we're drawing our shadows. So you think about the light source. So in these examples here, the light source is coming from the left, shining towards the right. So the shadows are underneath here. And the thing to remember is when you're doing your shadows that you need to be consistent. OK, you wouldn't have one shadow on this side and then this, another shadow on the opposite side. So think about your light source can be coming from above or below or left or right. It doesn't matter, but you just need to be consistent. And you can see that the use of shadows just helps to kind of exaggerate and make things stand out a bit more. And again, you can see none of these things are complicated shape. That torch is quite identifiable as a torch. Uh, we're using a rectangle. We're using a triangle. Uh, they're easy to draw shapes. OK, I'm by no means a, an artist. So I want to talk to you briefly about uh, real time sketch noting. That is sketch noting, uh, taking sketch notes while someone's delivering a presentation. And the most important thing during this is active listening paying close attention to what the presenter's saying. So you need to switch off distractions like uh, mobile phones or don't be distracted by an email or anything. You shouldn't be anyway when someone's presenting, but trying to minimise the distractions around about you. If you're sitting beside someone who you know, who you think is going to be very talkative, explain to them that I need to concentrate uh, on what I'm doing here. You really need to to focus. Sorry, focus. I can't speak. Focus very clearly on what the speaker is saying. And the idea of this is it helps to filter out important information to allow you to identify the key points that the presenter is making. Um, and what I also do when I'm sketch noting, uh, I really do genuinely have a hideously bad memory. So I always have a notepad next to me where I just sketch down uh, a few notes uh, about something that someone said if, I, if I'm not doing it exactly uh, at the right time. Uh, the shadows and things, the colouring in, that can all be added at the end. The important things to get the information down. Uh, I've written here, embrace your mistakes by spelling your wrong uh, as you are deliberately to highlight that sometimes you, you, there will be mistakes. Embrace them or you can use sticky labels are very good for covering up mistakes. So just use a sticky label, uh, cut it to the right size, stick it over and it works amazingly well. Uh, also, you can practice real time sketch noting by listening to TED Talks. I think TED Talks typically are 18 minutes. I think I'm correct in saying that. Uh, is letting a, a TED Talk play through, getting the information and practice uh, practice that way. Uh, and also um, taking photographs of the slides when someone's giving you a presentation. I find it quite useful when I'm sketch noting to take some photographs of the slides as I go along as well, because it means I can look back at that to finalise uh, the sketch note. Uh, another thing that's quite helpful for real time sketch noting is in advance of the presentation, I would ask you to uh, write down the presentation, although annoyingly sometimes the abstract that people put in, <laughs> we're all guilty of it though, and the, the title they put up in the presentation uh, is different. Uh, so that can be a bit irritating, but uh, if possible, write out the title in advance. Find out the Twitter handle of the speaker in advance as well. When I do my sketch notes, I put the title of the presentation in the centre, followed by the person's name and their Twitter handle just underneath that. Um, um, and also we've talked about the minimising uh, distractions and also importantly, leave space to add your Twitter handle, OK? Because hopefully um, at a conference setting, uh, you also include the conference hashtag uh, as well on your sketch note. If you share it and tag the presenter, quite often they're very appreciative that you've gone to the effort of sketch noting their session uh, and they'll share it. If your Twitter handle's on there, I guess it gets you uh, a bit of recognition uh, for what you've done as well. And importantly, uh, in conferences or even when I'm attending my ED classes, I'll share the information with my classmates, my sketch notes. I'll share it online as well. OK, if you've done this work, it's nice to be able to, to share it. So take a photograph uh, of your sketch note and share it on social media. Uh, as I said previously, tag the presenter and use the conference hashtag uh, as well. <laughs> 